You shouldn't make fun of California. California is where it's at. It's the one state after Washington that I could consider living in. I lie. Washington, Oregon, and California. I could live in all three of them. Eventually, when the world breaks apart like it's going to, BC, Washington, Oregon, and California will form their own country. Hopefully, it will be called Cascadia. It should be. That's what should have happened. Because all of Canada and America's trade on the West Coast goes north and south, not east and west. So, but I don't make the rules. Nobody would want one of those things. A labradoodle. No, not labradoodle. Oh, okay. I thought you said labradoodle. Although I hear labradoodles are nice dogs, but again, I have the constant fear of getting a Labrador-sized poodle. My friend, and I know I've told you this story before, my friend had a dog that was half Chihuahua, half Labrador. Now, obviously, that's not a real animal. It was done artificially. But what they ended up with, luckily, was a Labrador Chihuahua-sized, which is perfect, because imagine how hideous and horrible it would be if you had a Labrador-sized Chihuahua! <laughs> A Great Dane Chihuahua sized. All right. Who's got an answer number one for me? Everybody should. F. Number two. E. e. Number three. A. Number four. H. Number five. E. Number six. G. Number seven. B. B. Any questions? Any questions so I can explain them? Yes, I know, Aiden, but amazingly, no one will ask any, for any of it to be explained, which would, of course, mean everybody got 100% on the review, which would, of course, mean everybody should get 100% on the test. None of those three things are going to happen. Well, no, what is going to happen is no one's going to ask me to explain anything. That's going to happen. And then later you'll complain about how I go too fast. 8 through 14. I could just call names, but then I get in trouble for damaging you people. B? D. D. Then? E. Then? A. Then? C. No! It's not quite B. Is it just B? No. How can it? Is it A? No. Uh, it's F. Oh, yes. An entire radical, root 7. What's that number out front that we don't write? No, no, no. That's the little number. The big number is 1. 12. 12. That's C. 13. D. Yep. And fitting, I mean 14. F again. Well done. Usually somebody, only one, per, this year you guys can take credit. You are the first class that I've ever taught that only one person in the class ask how it was possible that F was both of them. And I only had to show them that sentence once. I was so happy. I didn't want you to get a, high, you know, a big head on Friday, but you're the first class that ever only one person out of 30 has asked. I don't remember who it was. I think it was you, but I wasn't gonna point it out. But did you told everybody? So everybody else actually read the instructions yeah. or didn't do it? One of the two. I didn't even read the instructions, but I did the answer. All right. That's also out of seven. Now, in the blanks, there's obviously a little bit of leeway here, yeah? All right. So what do you, what's going in the first blank? Add. 
Somebody always says plus the exponents. I'm glad you all said add. It, somebody always does. And here, somebody always says times the exponents. But the proper word is, of course, multiply. And here, zero. zero. That's out of three, making the first page out of seven and seven and three is 14. Right? All right, 17. Woo! 17. Okay, this question has a proper word answer, but a lot of people forget what the proper word is. It is reciprocal. But I will accept... Not, I don't like opposite, because opposite of one-half is not two over one. It's negative one-half. Flip, I would take... Even though that's not really a math word, I will take it. I would also take, even if you said, I have no idea what this is called, but if you did something like x, y to the negative 2 equals y over x to the positive 2, if you actually wrote something like that, I'd be happy with that too. That's worth 1. Uh, 15. 15 to the 1 half. What else is, how do we write something to the 1 half? Square root 15. I don't need the 2 because you don't have to write the 2. Is it okay if you did the brackets the 1 and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one is 4 to the 5th. This one is 7. This one is... Negative three. This one is the fourth root of. Huh? 405. <laughs> if there's one three out there and it was a fourth root, how many threes are under there? Four. 3 to the 4th is 81, and there's a 5 under there. 81 times 5 is 405. Don't, Michael. It's 81 times 5. 80 times 5 and 1 times 5. 405. And this one, tricky, tricky, what is it? Pardon me? M9 over N6. Not quite. I know, that's, that's why it's cool. What if this under here was sorry oh i know what if that was uh x to the sixth x six to the one third and then what would you do there times right so, now I have a frozen computer. But I have m squared over n to the third all to what power? 1 over 3. One over three right? What do I do over the brackets? Multiply it. What's 2 times 1 third? Two thirds, so it's n to the two thirds over, or sorry, m to the two thirds over what? What's one third times three? One, n. That's the answer. And all of them are also. We're going to say they're worth one as well. I've said
six, seven there. Number 10, what, what if I don't dissolve the bracket? I'm sorry, what? If you left it like this? Yeah. Give yourself a half mark. Because it's supposed to be simplified every chance you get. Okay. So, if something is a power of 4, that means 4 is the base, right? So 4 to the something equal 1024, which means, which means since that is the in, or exponent, that must be the index, yes? So I need 1024, I, and there was nothing left over. So some amount of 4s came out of there, right? Okay, but you, you understand why, right? If you keep breaking this down by four, you find it's a group of five of them. Okay. Prime factorization. It's a very large number, but it ends in what? I'm going to give you four this week to straighten your asses out, okay? This week. If on Friday I have to do this even once when I'm writing, you're all moving, okay? Understand? Yeah. All right. Since it ends in four, what am I going to start with? Four. Uh, two, because it's supposed to be prime factorization. So I don't care how you do it. I do it this way. And another two, because 4802, 2401, and there I have to stop with the twos because that's odd. Two plus two is four. Four plus one is five. So I can't use three. It doesn't end in zero or five. So I can't use five. So I try the next prime number, which is seven. And it does work. I get 343. Then I do seven again and I get 49. And I can stop there. Why? Because 49 is a square root. So there is a group of two, seven. There is a group of two, seven. And there is a group of two, two. So I have seven, seven, two. Seven times seven times two is 98. Now, of course, all of you, I am betting, immediately the first thing you did was with your calculator, you did square root of 9604 and got 98, which is fine. But if you don't show me all this, I'm giving you zero for that on a test. Okay? Because I don't care about the right answer. I care about your process to get it. Okay? I can teach a monkey to punch square root 9604 with enough bananas. And I can teach a monkey that I've genetically altered to be a giant monkey to destroy Chicago. I cannot wait for that movie. Oh, First of all, any movie The Rock is in is worth seeing. I would watch The Rock sit down and make breakfast, and I would pay the $10 for it. Well, that's because you're wrong. The Rock is the most electrifying man in, forget sports entertainment, the most electrifying man in entertainment. I love The Rock. Love him. Huh? I like Benedict Cumberbatch, but he's no Rock. He's no rock. The only thing bad about The Rock is he continues to choose bad movies because he's so awesome. Like Baywatch. I don't know why The Rock doesn't just keep remaking The Rundown, which was like the greatest movie ever. You didn't see The Rundown? I don't care about The Rock. Well, you're crazy. I can't even talk to you. All right. I don't like Kevin Hart. Okay. I didn't say I don't like Kevin Endozo. I said I don't like Kevin Hart. All right. So if square A has those side lengths and square B has those side lengths, 
write and evaluate an expression using exponents. So for the area of each pair. So what is the area of square A? Five point one squared. And what is the area of square B? Three point five squared. Now, how do I turn that into an expression that will give me the total area? What math do I have to do? Add. And the answer is, of course, thirty-eight something. I don't care how many decimal places you put in. Now this one, I was nice to you. The question used to say the area in square feet, and I gave you the measurements in square yards, but I changed it because I was in a good mood. It's the exact same thing though. 4.3 squared plus 9.3 squared to get whatever you get. It's like 104 or something. Oh, sorry. Uh, the prime, the square root question was out of two. Both of these are out of two. And then the exponent question. Dun, dun, dun. More than one way to do it, yes? Yes, Michael. Uh, sure, I'll take an answer right now. No. Your C is not right. Does anybody have another number for C? C3. No, C3PO, not CP3O. That's okay. You didn't grow up watching it like I had to. Like I chose to. Did you just say you've never seen Star Wars? Not even one of them? Not even one of them? I am shocked and appalled. Ayaka, did you say you haven't seen Star Wars? No. But you're Japanese. You've seen The Hidden Fortress, right? No. The Akira Kurosawa masterpiece from 1957 that is the basis no. of Star Wars? No, I <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nobody's seen The Hidden Fortress. I'm just joking. But if you find yourself bored and you want to watch a movie from 1957... It's called The Hidden Fortress, and it's what Star Wars was based on. The first one. The good first one, not the stupid Phantom Menace first one. The real first one, A New Hope. Anyway, uh, more than one way to do this. What do I recommend doing first? He waited patiently. What do I recommend doing first? Not in this case, because you've got so many exponents in there that could simplify first. But again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I just want to know if, who remembered what I would do first. So I would go A cubed, B to the fourth, C to the sixth, all that is squared, over B to the sixth, C to the fifteenth. Then I would tidy at the top, A to the 6th, B to the 8th, C to the 12th over B to the 6th, C to the 15th. 6 minus nothing stays A6, 8 minus 6, B squared, 12 minus 15, negative 3, so it has to go down. And that's going to be out of 2 as well, making that whole page out of... 7 and 8 is fitting. Ya, ya, ya. Ya, ya, ya. Number four. You're getting, getting two marks for it. One for getting them in the right order and one for your description. The right order is 4 root 4, 3 root 6, root 30, and 2 cube root 
five. That gets you one. For the other mark, you had to give me what you did. So you can decide. If you didn't bother to write a reason, you don't get that mark. But here are some ways you could have done it. Go. Long, complicated equations for each one. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, Ex I expand them to entire radicals. That's what I do. So this guy becomes the cube root of 40. This guy's already the square root of 30. This guy, four times square root of four is eight. And this guy is root 54. And we need them in the biggest numbers. We want to go biggest to smallest. Well, eight is bigger than all of these things. So this guy had to be first, then the square root of 54, then the square root of 30, and then the cube root of 40, we know has to be just a little bit more than three, right? So that's why he's last. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, express each entire radical as a mixed radical. So this is simplifying radicals. Two. One for the work, one for the description. How do I simplify root 45? Three root five. Yep, that's the answer. Three root five. And how do you do? Do I care how you do it? No. no. If you went nine times five and brought out the three, fine. If you broke it down, 45, nine and five, three and three, and broke it down that way, I don't care but every one is worth two. What's the difference here? There's an index. So instead of a group of two, I'm looking for groups of three, right? So I use eight and five. What's a cube root of eight? So that's two cube root five. What about C? I got to break down 243. Can I divide that by three? That's 81. Can I stop there? Yeah. Why? 81 is a square root, so it's 9 root 3. <sighs> Express each radical as a power. Where does the radicand go in a power? The base. Where does the index go in a power? Denominator. The denominator. Where does the exponent go in a power? Numerator. Numerator. Done. This guy's a little bit harder. What is the index here that isn't written? Two. So that is, what's, where does the radicand go? Base, so that's x to the 4 over y cubed. All that is to what power? 1 over 2. One over two. What's half of 4? x squared over y to the 3 halves. Out of 2, if you stopped here, you give yourself 1. Each of these are out of 2. And this one. How do you do that? Same as exponents. I care about the number first. Does 64 have a cube root? What is it? That's a square root. It's 4, right? Everybody cool with that? Now, n... The exponent or the index becomes what? He waited patiently. He is continuing to wait patiently. Um, 
what it is for. Cubed. Four cubed is sixty-four. Okay, 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 okay. What is the radicand here? 64 n to the fourth, right? So I have the cube root of 64 and I have the cube root of n to the fourth, correct? Okay. To put this in exponent form, that is 64 to the one third, yes? which is four. Everyone agrees? What's this one? N, where does the exponent or the index go? Denominator, where does the power go? Numerator, N to the four thirds. I'm not sure what you guys were asking me before. Everybody cool? All right. This question, there's always an argument about it. What do I mean when I say how many rolls? Do I mean how many times people have to throw the dice? Or do I mean how many turns it's going to take? So, yeah, because that's the one that applies to what we're doing right now, right? If there are eight people in the game... How many do you expect to be eliminated after the first round? Three? Four. Because there's eight people. They have a, one in, you're either going to roll even or odd, right? Until we roll, we don't know what's going to happen. But we would expect, since it's 50-50, we would lose half the people in the first round. Yes? So I would go down to four. Now how many people will I lose? Two. two. Then one more roll to get a winner. So I need one roll, two rolls, three rolls. Because two, I'm losing two every time, will get me to eight when I cube it. Now somebody says, some people argue, they're like, well, uh, you mean, you said rolls, Mr. Myers. Okay, eight people had to roll here. So that's eight. Four people had to roll here, that's 12. Two people had to roll here, that's 14. Sorry. Eight rolls, four rolls, two rolls, eight and six, and then you have your winner. Either way, what? Two hands went up, what? Yes, of course. That's why I use the word expected. I did it on purpose to avoid this lawyer ball stuff. Because every roll of the dice is mutually exclusive. So even though it's nearly impossible to roll 10 odd numbers in a roll, in a row, technically, each time you roll, it's a 50-50 shot. So even if you flipped a coin or rolled the dice and you actually rolled nine evens in a row, it's still, that 10th roll is still 50-50. It's going to be even or odd. Even though in the grand scheme of things, the chance of it being another even in a row seem smaller, they're not. Understand what I'm saying? That's why I put the word expected there, to avoid that argument. Because before you actually roll the dice, you have no idea what's going to happen. Right? But if you were to say... You know, in a perfect world, you're going to have a winner in three rolls. Or three turns, I mean, right? If everything goes the way you would expect it to go. Because you would expect first guy rolls even, second guy rolls odd. Right? Not always, guys. Eight contestants all roll. Yes, Miss Lloyd. Phone for you. Making that page out of 16, I believe. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yes. And the last page.
What is wrong with this person's work? You get one mark for that. Where did they make a mistake? I'm sorry, what was that? Wong? Well, you guys have a typo. You don't have the little plus sign there. Well, that's going to make it a going to have made it difficult. But of course, you should have known that negative 0.25 and negative 0.75, if you add them, you get negative one. So you guys had a typo there. Sorry about that. You can see it's on mine. It's just not on yours for whatever reason. So there was the error because they did negative 0.25 plus negative 0.75. That's the mistake. And then this is also wrong because this was wrong, right? So there's the mistake. They should have done what? What should they have done with those exponents? Yeah, they should have subtracted. So what it should have been was three to the negative 0 0.25 minus 0 point, negative 0 0.75. Minus a minus is what? Plus. So it should have been 3 to the negative 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75, which is 3 to the 0 0.5, which is the same as 3 to the 1 half which is the same as the square root of three. I would take either of those for the full marks available to you down here, which was two, making that last page out of three. Okay. Making the whole thing out of three and 16 is 19 and 15 is 34. And 17, I got 51. When will you tell me what you got? Or if I come around later today. I don't, I don't know if I will or not. Okay, last chance before the test tomorrow. What, if anything, with exponents and or radicals are you confused? Listen to me. If you didn't get 51 on that, you have questions. Look at the people around you, at the scores they wrote down. If they didn't get 51, they have questions. If they don't have the backbone to ask the question, be a hero and ask a question for them. Okay? Your test tomorrow will have the following on it. You may wish to write this down on page, I think page 117 in your book might be blank. The bottom of it is. Your test tomorrow will have on it the number system. A little bit, like a couple of questions. Real number, rational number, irrational number type of thing. Okay, it will have on it GCF. It will have on it LCM. It will have on it simplifying radicals. It will have on it making entire radicals. <coughs> It will have on it exponents. All laws. Multiply, divide, power to a power, exponent of zero, exponent of less than zero, negative numbers, and exponents of fractions. 
It will have all of that. It will have, I missed a spot right there. It will have multiplying and adding of radicals. Take a moment, make sure you are comfortable with all of those things. If not, now is your chance to ask because tomorrow is too late. You will notice all, that's fine. You are welcome to not show work, but remember if you show me the wrong answer with no work, I'm giving you zero out of four. That's your risk. Because all I can mark is what I see. And if you don't show me work, I can't mark it. I'll wait a moment while you decide if you're really not going to ask me about any of those things. Yes. There is the list again. I have a fractional exponent. Do I have anything else? Okay. Radical and entire radical. Ayaka. GCF and LCM. No problemo. Yep. What? Exponent to an exponent. Okay. Number system, Ayaka, it's just what's a real number, what's a rational There's like two marks on the test. And there's a video about it. I wouldn't even worry about it. GCF and LCM, you find them the same way. Somebody give me a number bigger than 300. 343. 343. Good one. Now give me a number somewhere in the 100s. What? 101 is no good. It's a prime number. Huh? 121 is a good one. All right. If I want the GCF, and I want the LCM of those things. One I'll do it, the GCF I'll do in blue, the LCM I'll do in green. One of the biggest problems kids have is they don't know what a factor is and they don't know what a multiple is. I'm gonna write down a very simple equation here. Two times three equals six. Which of those are factors and which of those are multiples? Michael, which are the factors? Two and, Two and three are the factors. So factors are smaller than the product. Okay? The six is the multiple. And the multiple is bigger than the factors. So two times three. That means six is a multiple of two and it's a multiple of three. Because two times three is six and three times two is six. Is everybody good? So GCF and LCM, will the GCF be bigger or smaller than these two numbers? Smaller. Will the multiple be bigger or smaller? Bigger, right? What is the biggest Greatest common factor we could have here. No, bigger. Without actually doing it, the biggest one you could have is 121, right? 
because it's possible 121 goes into 343. We know it doesn't, but it's possible. And we know 121 is a factor of 121 because one times 121, right? What is the smallest possible lowest common multiple? No, that's the factors. The smallest multiple is 343 because this might go into that and 343 times 1 is 343. Everybody good? All right. Now how you find it is the same way. You prime factor. 343 is 7 times 49, which is 7 times 7. Yeah? So that is 7 cubed. 121 is 11 times 11. Right? 11 squared. Now, is there any common factors? No, because that's 7, that's 11. So the GCF equals 1. Because 1 is the only number that goes into both of them. Everybody with me? All right. The LCM is everything counted once. So, there's a 7. i got to count them all. So it's 7 cubed times, there's an 11. i got to count them all. 11 squared. So the LCM is 343 times 121. It's a giant number. Everybody with me? That's a nice easy one because there was nothing common. Everybody with me? All right, now let's change it and make it slightly more difficult. Okay. I'm going to make this 280. So we've still got 7 cubed, yeah? So let's break down 280. What's the first step you would use? 2, 140, then what? 270, then what? 2, then what? 5 and 7, and we'd stop, right? So this guy is 2 cubed times 5 times 7. GCF, is there anything common? What? How many 7s? 1. So the GCF here, 7, because there's one 7 common. What's the LCM? Got to count everything once. How many 2s do I have to count? Three twos. How many fives? One. One five. How many sevens? Four. You only count everything once. You do no repeats. Yeah. Doesn't these three sevens cover that seven? Um, yeah. So we just count three sevens. Okay? Is everybody with me? Let's do this with some smaller numbers now, just to make sure. Give me a number between 1 and 100. 84. 84. Sounds good. Give me another number between 1 and 100. 84 and 67 is a prime number. No good. 56 is a great one. 84, break it down. What are you going to use? 2, 42, then what? 2, 21, then what? 3 and 7, right? So that would be 2 squared times 3 times 7, yeah? Break down 56, what are you going to start with? 2 and 28, then what? 2 and 14, then what? And 7, so that guy is 2 cubed times 7, yes? Now, what's common for the GCF? How many 2s? That guy's got three twos to give? That guy's got three, but this guy can only cover two of them. So what's the greatest amount of twos I can get? Two twos. And what else? A seven. What's two squared? Four times seven is what? 28. So that is the GCF. Cool? The LCM, count everything once. So I got to count twos. How many twos will cover everybody's twos? 
Three of them. Two cubed. Do I got to count that three? Yep, because I got to count everything once. And how many sevens? Just one. Covers both of them. Two, time, two cubed is eight times three times seven. Eight times three is 24 times seven. 24 times seven is 168. So the LCM is 168. Is everybody good? GCF, count everything common. LCM, count everything once. That's okay. Everybody good with LCM and GCF? What was next on the list? Radicals and entire radicals. Oops. It's confusing because this is a radical, but it's also an entire radical. Okay? Because it's a radical, and this is also a radical. Which one of them is entire? This guy is entire because no coefficient. This guy is mixed because he has a coefficient. Just like in fractions, one half fraction, three and one half mixed numeral. But this is technically also 7 over 2. It's also a fraction. With me? Okay. So everyone is good on that distinction? And remember, I am recording all this, so it will be there for you. Uh, exponent. All the laws. Start. What? Yeah. Yeah. So start with this one. X squared cubed. What does that mean, Emily? What's the base? X. And what is happening to X inside the brackets? It's squared, right? So that would be X times X, yes? That's what's in here. But all of that is cubed, right? So what happens to that X and X? How many times do I got to write it? Three times, because the exponent, right? So it would be XX, 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 right? How many X's is that? X6. So the shortcut is you multiply, right? But if you know what it means, you can always get to it the long way. Cool? All right. So now, change it slightly. x squared y. Now what's the base inside the brackets? x squared and y are inside, right? And how many of them do I need? Three. How many x is there? Two, four, six, right? How many y's? One, two, three. And the shortcut is still multiply. Okay, everyone, usually that one is easy to pick up. Here's where you guys are going to screw it up on your test tomorrow. I guarantee it. I am recording it right now. I am guaranteeing that some of you are going to do what I'm about to show you wrong on the test tomorrow, even though I'm going over it right now. 12x squared y cubed squared. What's the answer? 144x4y6. What are you going to screw up? You're going to forget that that goes there as well. Someone is going to do it. I guarantee it. Even though I'm making a huge deal of it right now. Okay? Everybody cool? What if I gave you this?
what would you do there? You already know what that part is. What is it? 144x4y6. What do you do there? Same thing, so what is it? Then what? 144 times 4, which is 576, x to the what? 6, because now we're adding the exponents because we're multiplying. Y to the 8. Everybody cool with that? You good with exponent to an exponent? Okay. What if the exponent, and this is going to lead us into fractional exponents, if the exponent is 144x to the 4th, y to the 6th, to the 1 half, that exponent goes everywhere, right? So I would get 144 to the 1 half, which is the same as the square root of 144, which is 12, right? And 4 times 1 half is 4 divided by 2, so it would be x squared, y3. Even if it's a fraction, we still do the same rule. It's still multiplying. What messes you guys up is if I gave you something like this, x to the 5th to the 1 half. 5 doesn't divide by 2, Mr. Myers. No, but you can still multiply. 5 over 1 times 1 half is 5 halves. So that's your exponent. Okay? And then if I asked you, so this would be y to the 5 halves, right? That's okay. And the other way you could write that, that's rat, or that is exponent form. Exponential form. The other way you could write this, 12x squared, square root of y, y to the fifth. That is radical form. Okay? They're the same answer. Everybody cool? And I think that's everything everyone asked about. Yes. You can all feel you can multiply and add radicals. Yeah? If they're little numbers, 2 root uh, 7 times 3 root 4. Uh, not 4, because that is the square root. If they're little numbers, what do we do? Expo coefficient with coefficient, which is what? 6. And radical with radical, which is what? 35. And then what would we do if we could? No, 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 no. If we could do something with 35, we'd simplify it. We'd bring something up. But we can't because it's 5 times 7, right? What if they're bigger numbers? 2 root 98 times 7 root 56. Simplify first. And then, might you have to do it at the end? Yes, you might. Is everybody good? Once, twice, thrice. Okay. Uh, let us then, cabbages, because we have 28, 20 minutes left in class, please turn over to what I believe for you is 119. 118 as the outline has everything we're doing this unit. If you look on page 118, you will see number one, lesson one, what we're doing right now. This is grade nine stuff. You already know this. Depending on your grade nine teacher, you may have seen this. Maybe. And maybe. But here, I don't know of any grade 9 teachers in our school that have done this. So here is guaranteed to be new to almost all of you. Okay? But first three bits you shouldn't have too much trouble with. Certainly not the first one. 
So let's have a quick look at it. Because we got 20 minutes to kill, so it's not a problem. But first, take a stretch. Talk to your friends. Take a moment. And five, four, a three, a two, and a one, and we're back. We will just discuss what a polynomial is, and then we'll probably be done. A polynomial is an expression. Before I go any further, I have to discuss the difference between an expression and an equation. That is an equation. Why? Michael. Because something's happening and you equal an answer. Now, turn this into a grade 9 math problem. 2 plus x equals 9. Now it's a grade 9 math problem, yes? Why? Because you got to do algebra. Will you get an answer? Yeah. Yes. What is it? Seven. Seven. Duh. Now, what's that? That's an expression. Why? Because there's no answer. X could be anything. Everybody understand? All right. So a polynomial is an expression which contains... at least one of the following. It could have a constant. What does the word constant mean in English? If I tell you I am constant at something, what does it mean? Always. Always. I never ever change, right? I am constantly handsome. I am constantly funny. I am constantly intelligent. Right? As are all of you. Right? Right. What would that mean in math? Something that never changes in math. What's that? A number. Okay? Four. It's always four. Everybody cool with that? All right. The other thing it might have are coefficients which are related to constants but are slightly different. What is a coefficient? You just learned them in the radicals unit. Like literally 10 seconds ago when we were talking about mixed radicals. I know it was a long time ago. What's a coefficient? He waited patiently. It sits out in front and multiplies, right? So a coefficient is really a constant that multiplies. What does that look like in math class? 4x. 4 times x or 4y, or 4q, or 4 root 7, or 4 fish, or 4 lightning bolt. It doesn't matter. Everybody good? The other thing it might have is a variable. And a variable is simply what? What does, what does the word variable mean? If a constant means it's always the same, what does a variable mean? It varies. It can change. How do we represent that in math? Because math, we like exact. We always use X, but what could we use, Evan? Anything that isn't what? A number. So a variable is anything that isn't a number. Now, when you guys were doing algebra in kindergarten, which is when you started to learn algebra, the variables were a blank, right? Think back to your grade, your kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade three work. It was the little gray square that was colored in, right? What do we use now? We use 
letters and symbols, right? Because when we were doing trig, we had a variable that wasn't a letter, didn't we? Does anyone remember? Theta, right? When we were finding the degrees. We used that. That was a variable because it was unknown. It could be anything. Everybody cool? Okay. A monomial, mono means it is an expression with one of these, these, one of these at least. So, four, monomial, there's one thing. For x, still a monomial, because that four is acting on the x. It's only going to give me one thing still. Everybody with me? And finally, 4x squared. Still a monomial, because it's only going to give me one thing. Everybody with me? Now, here's where it gets tricky. Is this a monomial? Yes. Why? Because it's all one thing. If you know what x, y, and z are, this is going to give you one answer, right? There's no other math to happen. If I tell you that x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3, that answer is 24. Everybody with me? And it's only 24. That's why that's a monomial. What's the shortcut to remember it? There's no add or subtract. Once you have addition and subtraction, you have a new monomial. So obviously, duh, what's a binomial, like a bicycle? Two of them. Two monomials. And what separates them? What separates them? Add or subtract. 2x plus 5. 3xy minus 4yz. And duh, what's a trinomial? Three monomials separated by what? Plus or minus. 2x plus 5y plus 3. What about this? Don't write this one down. Just think about it. Monomial or binomial? What? I, I just heard the omial because you're stretching. Look at it again. The green one. You add them, don't you? They're like terms, yes? So that's a monomial because you're going to simplify always. Everybody with me? It's a tricky one. What about that? Now it's a binomial. You can't add those. No. Because here's why, Michael. If I tell you x equals 2, then you have to do separate math here, don't you? Because that's 6, and that's not 8, that's 16. Then I have to add two separate answers. With me? Okay. And 926, we're going to stop there. You have a test tomorrow. Everybody good? Do you have the full period for your test tomorrow? Yes, indeed you do. I would have liked to have done a little more notes and given you a little bit of work so you had it at the end of tomorrow's test, but so it goes. Um, I have two more minutes. I would like a moment of your time. Please listen up. Listen up.